Yes, we are used to dealing with illness and, and dealing with death. I guess what we're not, what I, well, I'm, what, certainly what I'm not used to is dealing with so much, so much death. In all the years I've been qualified as a doctor, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. With the numbers rising, there is certainly a sense of impending doom in many people, in many of my colleagues. NHS staff across the piece are going to need an awful lot of support here. The lasting legacy of COVID is far greater than we ever, ever can imagine. My name's Sonia Adesara. I am I'm an NHS doctor. I work in the London Hospital. My name is Dale Gardner. I'm an intensive care consultant in the Midlands. My name is David Oliver. I'm a consultant physician. My name is Sarah Clark. I'm a consultant in intensive care. It feels surreal, like a very crazy nightmare that still waiting to wake up from. There are sometimes some shifts which lead us to go home and and cry on the way home. It's become such a challenge. The, the only way we're really coping is that sense of feeling of mutual aid, that we're actually supporting each other. So in my own hospital on Christmas Eve, we had 75 patients in the hospital who had coronavirus. And by the 29th of December, we had 170. As of today, we have 210. Huge numbers. I think we've got two to 300 people with COVID in our hospital. I've seen plenty of fit people in their 40s and 50s who are sick enough to end up in hospital. And that's on top of, the, of all the other things that we treat in our hospitals. People coming in with heart attacks, infections, strokes, and all the other things that we have to deal with in the NHS. I've never had the experience until this pandemic of standing on an intensive care unit and looking left and right and up and down. And every single patient has the exactly the same condition, COVID. That's completely unprecedented. I've never seen so many people on oxygen for so long. And that's quite overwhelming. And it feels like there feels like there's no end in sight when it's like that. You're surrounded by very sick, often deteriorating uh, patients, scared families on the phone and it's, you know, it's, it's hard going. Having to contact families via telephone to tell them that a loved one is sadly going to die is one of the most unpleasant and deeply distressing things I've ever had to do. I don't ever want to get used to it because that would dehumanise it. No matter how many times you do it, it doesn't get any easier. It's really tough. It is really tough. For the vast majority of patients, visiting is not allowed, except when it might be the end of life. So that they are literally coming in uh, to say goodbye. And, and that's very tough. That's very tough on the family, very tough on the patient, and it's very tough on us to be meeting a family at that time. I guess what I'm not used to dealing with is being in the situation where you feel that you are just not able to give everyone the care um, and the dignified care that that everyone deserves. The days I remember the most bleakly are, are you know, standing on the intensive care, looking at a whiteboard full of patients, seeing a bed space that was normally have one name in it with a line through it. So now we've got two patients in the same bed space, in twin beds side by side, so that you, you're now doubling up during trying to decide where you know, where we where we deliver the care. We're used to sickness, we're used to death, we're used to dying, but it's the sheer number of people who are dying and often, you know, very breathless and really struggling when they do. And of course, there's the, the burden on the staff of having so many sick people to look after. There's also the feeling that it just goes on and on. And I think all of society probably feels the same way with this pandemic, that it feels like there's no end in sight. Just being surrounded by so many sick and dying people all the time is, of course, it's going to take its toll. And especially at the back of your mind, you know that it could be you. Staff are humans as well. They're getting COVID, they're having to isolate. So we are having having to deal with, you know, double the number of patients that we normally deal with on top of staff shortages as well. So it's extremely, 
difficult and um, stressful time for everyone. We have a big emphasis on staff well-being, but inevitably it's taking its toll and, and staff sickness is rising and will continue to rise, whether it be physical or emotional, everybody is going to need support through this. There's been 620 NHS staff died last year alone. All of that's upsetting, but for me personally, none of that is as upsetting as seeing people out there spreading disinformation and lies and undermining the NHS effort and undermining the public health efforts. And I want to scream and shout at them and drag them through an intensive care unit to see what we are doing to young patients and elderly patients alike. Um, intensive care is an unpleasant place to be. There was an organised protest march right outside St Thomas's Hospital with people saying we refuse to wear masks or do social distancing. For those people who deny and are mischief making, then they need to look at their conscience and they need to explore how they can sit and sleep at night um, when they are knowingly spreading misinformation but potentially harming their own, their own loved ones. We all got stories of this, of people who we know have coronavirus, we can see the x-ray, we can see the bloods. And either they or the families are saying, well, we don't believe it. Uh, we know it's not real. You know, it's all false positive uh, tests, uh, etc. I think myself and many other my colleagues all throughout the UK, we are emotionally exhausted. I do think there'll probably be a, a long term impact on health workers, which we will see over the next few months. And I think if the public could do one thing, <laughs> to help my uh, mental health, it would be to stop spreading disinformation of their nature. One of the most amazing things that still surprises me is how many times families have said thank you, how understanding families are, how wonderfully supportive of the NHS families have been over this time. It gives us some strength to carry on because we have that sense that we are all in this together. Sometimes some of the most humbling things are when a relative of a, of a deceased patient thanks us on their way out. That's, that's very difficult, both for them and obviously for us. But that, well, it's kindness and it, it, sometimes you think, well, we are appreciated. There is this tremendous camaraderie and team spirit within the, the NHS and I think that will get us through and out the other side. So many people within the NHS who you don't think about but who are literally been working all out to keep things going over the past few months and my just I guess gratitude goes out to each and each and every single one of them.